good, you know. You yeah. can say it, I can I can quote it. Yeah. I don't Always tell the truth. It's the easiest thing to remember. David Mamet. I never said most of the things I said, Yogi Berra. A man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest, Simon and Garfunkel. History does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Mark Twain. This might be the very last time this piano gets played at Armando's. I make an excuse: the piano is not; it's it won't hold a tune. Jeff is going to uh, do his best to make it sound good, but it's uh, it's going to be Yeoman's work to make that piano sound good. Anyway, uh, thank you all for coming to uh, Martinez and. Armando's and the way, uh, responsible for the quality of the music, Stuart Watson up there in the town booth. Nice work, Stuart. We got, we got Eloise back here running the bar and uh, so much more. I'm your host, Armando. We're so, so pleased, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome back to the stage here, Do Gajo, Jeff and Isabel. Dedicate this show to Mr. Roy Jeans. Roy is actually one of the reasons we stayed here when we came back from France. Um, we met him, he was one of the first people we met actually, before this was even a little idea in his head. And he's also, I will add, one of those people that remind you that one person can make the world a better place. A lot of quotes on the wall. That's your part of your inspiration. Yeah, yes. like the the quote there, toilet. Let uh -huh. people know where the toilet is. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. You know, there's this is just stuff that I come up with, and you know, I'll be mopping the floor or something, and uh, it dawns on me. If we lose our sense of the mysterious, then life is no more interesting than a snuffed out candle. Albert Einstein. Back to the quotes. Do you have a favorite? Well, I love the, you know, the Dylan. I just love yeah, Dylan, but yes. I mean, I can quote Dylan's, you know, songs. Uh, um, you know, she knows what I want to be, but it doesn't matter. But that's a great, great quote. You know, I mean, that's written outside here somewhere. Uh, it's just a bunch of stuff that, uh, you know. You but yes, just... the quote facing us. Uh, that's for the band, um, and it's good advice. I'll know my song well before I start singing. That's not always the case with the band. Uh, there are people that have fumbled through things here. How does one get their quote up on the wall? Uh, well, I love Bob Dylan. Um, and I'm reading uh, an interview of his in Rolling Stone. This is about the same time I open up this place. And when I read it, I thought, oh, that's my room. You know, and this mm -hmm. is Dylan, who I considered, you know, one of the greatest. Uh, and it just seemed, that's a no-brainer. you got to put that up. Well, please, would you read that? The quote is, the best sound you can get is an in an intimate club room where you've got four walls and the sound just bounces. That's the way this music is meant to be heard. Bob Dylan, 606. Um, and I thought, man, that's great. And this is before I had any little wall. And I said, well, I've got to put the, the quote up. You see the wall doesn't go any further. The, the collage ends at the quote. Yeah, you have to uh, that. And that's going to be on the wall forever. Right. And it's, it is appropriate in this room here. Yeah. This, this room gets some incredibly great sound. I mean, there's not a bad seat in it. Matter of fact, the sound is so good that you can be out in the street and it's very, very clear. You can be in my backyard, the patio, where I ask some people. I always advise people never to give advice. P.G. Woodhouse. Can you explain the sign that's over the door? 
Which sign? The callus. Oh, poor K. No, the callus. Oh, uh, um, that's my <laughs> Spanish. Uh, that's you can I can see do. mine's not good but at all. But <laughs> King Juan Carlos told Hugo Chavez, the uh, dictator. Oh, sure, yes. Uh, and uh, and it's, it, it is the translation is somewhere between why don't you shut up or why don't you be quiet. Um, of course, most people, to me, that was another quote that needed to be up because uh, I've asked people, you know, I don't ask them to shut up, I ask them you know, be a little quiet, you know, because people are listening. Um, so it just seemed appropriate. Uh, to put that and all the Spanish speaking community throughout the world know that quote because King Juan Carlos told Hugo Chavez, you know, this only a king can tell a dictator to shut up. <laughs> um, and I thought, well, that's good, you know, you yes. can say it, I can, I can quote it. Yes. Well, a lot of people come yeah. in here, but the music's loud, they can talk, it doesn't bother people. Well, a lot of times, I've got some, you know, softer performers, and people still want to talk like they're in a bar. And I politely ask them, why don't you take this conversation outside? And nobody's offended by that. Mm -hmm. They say, "Oh, okay," and they go outside, and they they can hear the music outside, and they can you know talk, and they're not bothering anybody. They're happy. I'm happy. It is unusual, mm -hmm. though, for the most part, because people do come here to yeah. listen to music. Yeah. That's, that's they don't come the here music. to dance. You mm -hmm. know, we have dancing. Sometimes the music is very you know danceable, mm -hmm. and people do dance. But for the most part, people come here and listen to music. Yes. You'll have an occasional right. somebody comes and hears about Armando's, and he's. He's, you know, happening and wants to, you know, talk it up with people. But most people just kind of, you know, don't pay much attention to him because we're here for the music, mm -hmm. not to meet you, you know, Romeo. The one true friend I thought I'd found tonight, the bottle let me down. Merle Haggard. So we've been blessed uh, with a lot of good people here. You know, Good Stuff Guitar Shop has been very, very supportive of this place. They donated a bunch of these guitars that are on the wall. People bring in a guitar. They want it, you know, can you fix this? And he said, well, no, I can't. Or I could fix it for $500. You know, okay, I'll pass. Here, here's your guitar. Well, he gives me these guitars. And I put them up on the wall because they make interesting little they do. pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a, 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 a guitar with a quote of David Bowie. And nobody gets it, but it's, uh, it says, the bitter comes out better. And that's all it says. But the, the end of the quote is, the bitter comes out better on a stolen guitar. But so I had this guitar, the bitter comes out better. And I had anybody yet to say, that's a Bowie quote, you know. And, but so that's my little inside joke, the bitter comes out better. And I, well, they'll get it eventually. Someone they will. might get it now, we're, now, now that we're going national with this. <laughs> this guitar up here, the, can I turn that guitar on? Oh, let, me, let me do this. Turn the guitar on. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, there you go. There we the, are. Uh, the Good artist, time. Ronnie London, who I met at uh, Two Day Town, um, said she was going to do a ceramic guitar. And I, well, okay, you know, sure, sure you are. Um, well, about two years later, she shows up with this guitar, just the face done in ceramic. You know, and I, well, that's great. That's beautiful. I encouraged her. She says, uh, you know, so she was going to do the whole thing because at the time she just had the face done. And so I, you know, again, you know, good deal, do it. And uh, so she presented me with this guitar about a year ago, and it's uh -huh. taken me a while to get the uh, the motor and and the light on it and make it right. And as you can hear, it's it's a little noisy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a lot of shows, you can leave this thing on, although it takes away from the performers. So generally, I have it on before the show, which adds a little glitz oh, yes. and people. Yes. That's an interesting piece. Yes. But I'll turn it off for the show because it, I think it takes away something from stage um, but that's a that's a great piece that is and I have people ask me about it all the time mm -hmm. for obvious reasons yes Style is a simple way of saying complicated things. Jean Cocteau. You know, as I look around, I wonder what inspired the decor? Well, I went to, you know, when I told you, Eloise and I went to school in Chico. We were both art majors. Yes. And as you know, in Chico, uh -huh. it's um, pretty loosey-goosey. And 
Um, so I was an art major at Chico. So, and, you know, so this was after the Army. I spent three years in the Army in Germany, and I got to expose myself to a lot of art. In Europe, I mean, I would go to museums. You know, my other, you know, soldier friends would be going down to the guest house getting hammered, and I'd be going to the next town because they had a decent museum, decent art gallery. Yes. And it looks, it looks a little chaotic in here, but there's uh, the curtains dampen the sound so it gets better sound here. The walls, which have uh, different uh, surfaces on it, break up the music. Um, there's just uh, reasons to do all of this stuff, and it gives me an opportunity to be kind of arty. Yes. That's Which right. I, I need. It's it's a gallery, in a way. Yeah. You know, I, that's how well, I Well, look, about, it. Uh, well, about 40 years ago, I rented this place, and this was one of my original frame shops, although it was laid out much differently. But I would do, you know, we'd do parties in my frame shop, too. Of course, there was no live music. Uh, but I, I knew about this place. It seemed like a perfect place to do it, and, and that I did not have to make money and didn't even try to make money. Um, that's how this place is a success. This place, well, I, I what was your original idea, your original concept for Armando's? You know, I, I knew what the, the footprint of this place looked like. And basically, it's a big square room with these four um, pillars in it. Mm -hmm. These pillars? Yes. What do you call these? And right down the middle of the room. And so I laid out the place initially. Uh, virtually, the, the stage was the same size as now. Um, although I'm not a carpenter, the, the stage was really wavy gravy. You know? We are all the same person, trying to shake hands with ourselves. Wavy gravy. <laughs> wavy gravy. You know, I mean, there were there were yes. deeps and valleys in it, and, um, and Thomas Martin, who uh, was a good friend and a sound engineer, um, was doing the early sound in Armando's, and one. Christmas, we always closed down for a couple of weeks, actually January. And one January, he said, we're going to rebuild that stage. And so he tore out the old stage, which was really comical. I mean, what? And then he built a real stage. I mean, it's steady, you know, hard, uh, flat, really good stuff. And these steps that hold uh, monitors. Yes. Um, much better situation. But yes. basically, the, the layout of the room is the same. As yes. you see, I keep tweaking it, you know, because I, I can't do. stop yes. myself. Yes. You know, before Armando's became you know, legitimate. It was a house party and we would do, uh, we'd open the doors, have a band come in here, the band, you know, bring a mob in here. And we weren't selling beer or wine, we were giving it away and we are living on a uh, tip jar. You know, we were taking donations. Um, and it wasn't paying the bills, but it was bringing in a little bit of money where we, it was just our house party anyway. Um, and the chief of police at the time uh, said to me over coffee, I'd see him every day, you know, at coffee, he said, you know, I love what you're doing down there. It's illegal, but I love it. You know, you get a liquor license. If you live outside the law, you must be honest. Bob Dylan. The liquor license was pretty easy to get. I was, you know, beer and wine. It was pretty easy. What the liquor license did was alert the uh, health department, and that wasn't easy. So it sounds as if the response from uh, the audience, from people that came to hear music, was pretty good. Oh yeah, from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Was mean, it your intention to have a, a concert uh, venue? No, it was my intention to have some fun, you know, and uh, invite some friends over um, and to play on a legitimate stage with people who yes. came just to listen yes. to the music. I mean, you know, people were drinking and, you know, people would get lucky and, you know, just like, you know, life. But there was a place whose main goal was to provide music. And apparently, I mean, it didn't dawn on me until much later, because many, many artists come in here and tell me, Drew, you know, I, there's no place like this. Well, mm -hmm. I suspect there's a lot yes. of places like this all over the country, but around here there's no place like it. And uh, the artists seem to respond very favorably to it, which makes me, yes. you know, I'm tickled to yes. make, keep them happy. To be or not to be, it's not a question. Jean-Luc Godard. Who's on your wall of fame and why? Um, people that worked here. People that built this place with me. Um, the people that were making no money. Nobody made money here for years. Trust me. Um, that's why everything was done pretty much on the cheap. But yes. um, people that gave me that time got their name on the wall. I mean, they wanted, okay. Eloise is the only one who never asked for it. 
and I spelled hers out so that it looks like it can go backwards and forwards. So it could uh -huh. be like Eloise, or it, we'll go inside, and I'll show you how her name is peculiar to all, all the right. other names. All all right. You want to go inside? Yeah, let's go see right. that. That'd be great. Okay, the uh, the poles have different. This is who's playing tonight. This gets changed every 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 gig. Uh, Chris is here tonight, but there's other names up here. You know, Joe Vorderberg. He just you know one of my great soundmen. He's the engineer of my sound. Uh, Eric uh, Akeson is uh, my public relations and my my guru. What do you call it? The uh, uh, the master, my slave master, or webmaster. <laughs> Here's Essiola, or let's see if it goes this way. It's Eloise, you see. And uh, this is the most controversial one I have. Is Jack Good Goodrich. Jack was the doorman here years ago, and Jack was a real doorman. He liked to throw people out. You know, he was kind of a heavy-handed uh -huh. doorman. First of all, the worst thing you can do in a in a room is have a flat wall. So initially, I built these panels different, you know, faces to break up sound that might bounce off this wall. Yes. So then I had these big, big panels, and I used to be in the business, you know, of, of uh, selling art and posters. So I had a lot of posters, but I've been saving up stuff for years. So let's just start festooning this with people that are controversial, uh, great, great musicians. But I mean, I have Sparrow Agam up there, you know. <laughs> Why? And Dick Nixon, a, uh, a president that I hated. You know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't hate Reagan. I didn't like him, but I hated Nixon. Uh, and Sparrow Agnew and I share a birthday, so we have a Sparrow Agnew party. You know, Earl Father Hines, I grew up with him. My father loved Earl Father Hines. I only recently got to love uh, Hank Williams in the last 15 years, uh, never in his lifetime. We're great stuff, but just, you know, Charlie Musselwhite, Dave Rubin, of course, local people, and uh, um, Clancy Hayes, Jimmy Rogers, just people that I love. Here's a, a small photo of Jimmy Hendrix over here playing backup for, uh, I think it's Otis Re uh, for not Otis Reddy, but uh, who did uh, the song I hate? Um, Mustang Sally. Letters. I, you know, as, as an art form, I love words. And posters, political posters have always been a, a great source. I mean, I was stealing political posters long before uh, I ran for office. You know, I mean, I just like doing it. I would paint uh, mustaches and rouge and everything. If anybody put their picture on a, on a campaign, I would feel obligated to go out and put a mustache on it or red lipstick. Um, and uh, so I defaced a lot of people who ran for office, uh, not because I disagree with them, because I had their picture on the poster and I felt, you know, you I gotta resist. do it. Try to be a rainbow in someone's cloud. Maya Angelou. Ken Dote, great, great uh, personality in town. The father, the father of the American bocce ball, I'm gonna say, and go out the limb, but that's, that's arguably the truth, that's gospel. Like, did you show the martini? Can you get from the martinis? You know, Joe DiMaggio? Yes. Yeah, this town's got it all. Black over here. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Roy would probably deny that he's political. Uh, and he makes a real point of being open to and listening to all sides of an issue. And he has indeed run a time or two for Martinez City Council. He almost won once, and I wish he had. But he also gets a little impatient during election time, particularly when Martinez and surrounding areas are covered with campaign signs. All of a sudden, around town, these sprouted up. Vote Armando, yes, on Highway 61. Now, a few of us, myself included, needed to have it explained. But folks who really know popular music from the 60s on know it's a reference to a Bob Dylan album in the, the 60s celebrating the U.S. federal highway that connected Minneapolis with New Orleans and had its own impact on popular music. 